Jareth here from ProjectorSewing.com. I'm so glad to have you here again with me today for part three of my Inkscape for Sewing series. This is a very beginner series, and today we're going to be talking about zoom and calibrating your projector in Inkscape. Now, I'm not going to go over all the basics of physically tilting and maneuvering your projector for calibrating. If you need more tips on that, check the article below, which is a full article on how to calibrate a projector for sewing. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with Zoom and Inkscape. In fact, the best secret is, once you've do done this, you can zoom to your calibration zoom with one click of a button. How cool is that? Today we'll be talking about your calibration zoom in Inkscape. We're going to learn how to zoom in and out on patterns, set that default zoom percent, which is also called zoom correction factor in Inkscape, so that every time you're at 100%, it's the actual size of your projected image. We're also going to talk about at the very beginning, just zooming and rotating. Zoom is control plus the mouse wheel. If you're on a Mac, you can use the command. There are other tools you can use for that as well. To rotate, we're going to use the status bar. Then we'll jump over to zoom correction factor, which can be found under edit and preferences. And finally, the shortcut. Once you have the zoom correction factor set, you can use the shortcut, which is the number one for your calibration zoom every time. All right. I am in Inkscape and I have just pulled up a paper that I have drawn a few things on just to go over zooming a little quickly. If you look down in the status bar, the X and the Y again is where your pointer is located. The Z does stand for the zoom level. I'm currently at 81% and you can zoom in with that plus and that minus if you would like. You can also type in the zoom box a percentage as well. However, if you have calibrated in Adobe before where you will type in a calibration zoom there, that is not what we're going to be doing today. We are going to make 100% always your calibration zoom using a zoom correction factor. So I will come back to that in a second. Over here is our R and that does stand for rotation and that is where we are going to rotate. You can do plus and minus, but that is just going to go in individual degrees. Also, if you come up to view and where it says orientation and you want to rotate and you try to rotate it that way, it doesn't completely rotate a full rotation. So that is not a favored way to rotate a document. I'm going to go ahead and reset rotation. So if you accidentally rotate it, just reset it. You can also come down to where the R is and just type in zero. That will be a reset rotation. If I want to rotate it clockwise, I'm just going to say I want it to rotate 90 degrees. Type in 90 and push enter. You can see where I say rotate clockwise. Let me zoom in using the shortcut, control, and the mouse wheel, and we'll zoom in. So I've rotated clockwise by typing in 90 degrees. I'm going to zoom out really quick, control, and my mouse wheel, and roll back, and I've zoomed out. I'm going to reset my rotation back to zero by typing in zero. And this time I want to rotate counterclockwise, so I'm going to put in negative 90. And that's going to show me that it's going to rotate the opposite direction, if you want to think of it that way. And I'm going to zoom in, and you can see I rotated counterclockwise. And I did a quick zoom in using control and the mouse wheel. And you can also grab the paper to move it around. Click that mouse wheel, yep, click right on it, and it's going to grab it. So let me zoom out a little bit here. I'm going to click my mouse wheel, and it look, it works like a little grabber hand, and you can drag your document around. I really love to use that to navigate around a pattern. And then we can come back, we can reset our rotation if we would like, just by getting it to zero, and clicking enter, and I've rotated that document. Let's go ahead and talk about how you can set it so that your 100% zoom is your accurate calibration zoom.
Next, we're going to talk about finding your calibration zoom for projecting patterns. Once you find your calibration zoom and use the zoom correction factor, all of your patterns will open up and should be accurate when you are at 100% zoom. To complete this process, you will need a calibration tool. It'll make things a lot easier just to check. I have one for you to download below. If you already have one, you can absolutely use that you already have. Before you begin calibrating and finding your zoom correction factor, I do recommend you come over to the layers panel. Just find the one that says page one. You can collapse everything and come over to the lock so that you don't accidentally click on any of the elements and move them around. It's just gonna make sure that doesn't happen. So go ahead and click that lock button. Let's go ahead and go over to edit and down to preferences and down to interface. And once you have interface selected, let's go ahead and make that screen as large as your screen. We're gonna be using that, so let's go ahead and just make it pretty large. I keep the language at the system default. I don't worry about some of these other things. What we're focusing on is the zoom correction factor, and it says in percent. We're going to adjust the slider until the length of the ruler on our screen matches its real length. And what we're gonna do is we're looking at this ruler and we want it to match our projected image from our projector on our cutting mat. We want it to be actual size. I want you to check that you are working in the units that you, would, you need to work in. I work in inches, so I'm gonna make sure inches are selected. And then I have this ruler it's as large as I can make it. And I'm going to turn on my projector and we're gonna project this ruler. And I'm going to first use a quilting ruler to test that and then check using the calibration grid that I already have open. So let me jump over to my projector and show what you what we have going on there. All right, go ahead and grab your quilting ruler or your tape measure, whatever you're using. And we're going to line up the zeros right at the beginning of the com computer screen ruler and your quilting ruler. Just make sure they're lined up. When mine is 24 inches, so I want the computer ruler to match 24 inches. I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to use that slider, and that can increase or decrease the size of the ruler. You can also use the plus and the minus. And you can type into the nearest hundredth of an inch, which I love how accurate that is. Those are all ways you can use to adjust the size of your ruler. Use whichever one works for you. This one's too big, so I'm going to go ahead and shrink it down. I went ahead and started with the slider just because it, it needed to go a lot. And as you get closer, I do recommend just typing it in. So I'm getting closer. I still need to adjust it some more. I'm going to go ahead and type in an amount right in where you can type. And again, you could type to the nearest hundredth of an inch. And I can see I'm getting closer and I need to just shrink it down a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it down. And I brought it down to 46. And remember, mine might be different than yours. They're not going to be the same because we have different setups. Once I typed in 46, the 24 inches on the computer screen ruler and on my ruler were matching. So I'm ready to go to our calibration tool and check it using our grid mat. Again, you're going to want to make sure those layers are locked. We're going to go ahead and go to full screen and pull that up. You can also decide what toolbars are shown or hidden by going to view, show, hide, and we're going to use that status bar. So make sure that is checked. Everything else can be unchecked. We don't need that, but we're going to use that status bar. 
And I'm going to, again, take my quilling ruler or my tape measure and check the grids. If you have a cutting mat with a grid on it, this is also a time you can switch over to that, and I am going to go ahead and do that. I'm pulling up this mat because it's a little bit easier to see, and you can see the squares. Everything is lining up really well. If I looked a little bit closer, the largest boxes, which you want to focus on, the largest boxes were just slightly on the inside. I want the printed lines to be on the center of the grid lines as much as possible. So I decided to just go ahead and jump back to the zoom correction factor. And I'm just going to increase it just a little bit. I increased it by five hundredths. So instead of 46 even, I did 46 and five hundredths to check that. And it looked a lot more accurate on my mat. And since I have two mats stacked, I did decide, don't worry, I went ahead and removed this mat to check it on the mat underneath that I usually use for cutting. It's just a little bit harder for you to see, but I did check it on my larger mat and that was my correct zoom correction percent. You are now calibrated in Inkscape. Every pattern, every document will open up with this zoom correction factor built in. All you need to do is make sure you're at 100% zoom, and the shortcut for that is the number one. So make sure to try that. Just press the number one, and voila, you are at your calibration zoom.